second now. Okay, great. Start over. So welcome everyone to this Cycle Commuter Task Force Lunch and Learn. Um, today it's about favorites. And so um, we're honored to have Margaret Baraskis. <laughs> I had to look at that. I wrote it <laughs> to make sure I had that right with uh, Bicycle Indiana. And we're going to start with our, one of our favorite things, which is the Bicycle Indiana Resource Guide. And so Margaret's going to kind of give us a start with that. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Tess. Um, I recognize some names um, on this call. A lot of you might remember me from doing a lot of work with the, the organization called Interscholastic, uh, or sorry, NICA, which the Indiana League was um, a big part of my life and getting kids on bikes and making school-based teams across the state of Indiana. Um, but now I'm with Bicycle Indiana. It's almost a year. Um, and I live in Terre Haute. And I am here today to talk about a big resource guide that the organization has put together many, many years. Um, I have probably taken a different approach to the resource guide than past years. I have an old one in front of me. I know my screen's kind of blurry. But if you go to our website, which is bicycleindiana.org, there is an archive of different links um, of previous versions. Um, but I'm going to share today the one that we made last year, which was my first big project as executive director of the organization. So I'm going to share my screen. And if everyone can see it, it should say leaders across the state. Um, and we have a digital version that kind of acts like a magazine. It's a neat program. Um, but in, in a nutshell, the big resource guide to me is a huge booklet um, that has articles, uh, tips, tricks, uh, bike shop directory, um, quotes, different articles about great people that, you know, are doing great things across the state. So my version of last year was highlighting these wonderful leaders that I've met in my cycling career living here in this in Indiana um, in this guide. So again, if you want, you can go to our website. Um, let's see if I can multitask and try to copy the link and plop it to my screen. So oopsies. Hold on, hold on. Let's see if I can do this. Maybe not. Um, anyway, I will try to figure out how to send a link. I can't find it on my screen. But anyway, here's the cover across. Uh, of course, it says leaders across the state. This is a really fun photo from a big race, if you're familiar with, which is the Dust Bowl 100. It's a gravel race that starts in a little town of Eminence, Indiana. Uh, Mark O'Leary is the, the leader in that, and he's doing some great things to bring um, racing, but also just a really fun, uh, inclusive event uh, for the state. So I'm going to flip through here. Um, table of contents, what's great about this digital version, and again, if you go to our website and, and go to the, the guide, you can click on anything and it'll, it'll shoot you to the page, which is really great. Um, but I'm going to go over a couple of different things in here uh, today specifically that I, that I per, you know, want to talk about. Um, Different things from getting to know who we are. There's a section about the board, who the organization is. Um, we are a, a, a nonprofit advocacy organization to talk about um, educating bicyclists, motorists, and policymakers and advocating for law, policy, and infrastructure. Um, I am a real, real uh, excited to just share resources, but also share stories, share people, um, share contacts. Uh, a lot of you know that if you need a contact in the cycling community, you can call me and I'll do my best to connect you with somebody. Um, we also have a section in the in the big guy that's um, called funding rides. And these rides are what support us and what I do in my position. Um, and it is a ride, whether it's a race or a ride across the state of Indiana, and each event will uh, donate $1 per rider that registers. So these are the different rides that agreed um, to donate that funding, and we call those funding rides. You might recognize some of them on it. <clears throat> but as I flip through this, I'm not going to go over every single page, um, but Again, in this particular resource guide for last year, um, I, again, wanted to focus on some really incredible people and really focusing on 
off-road riding. I think that's something really great for our state when it comes to mountain biking, gravel riding, um, just even touring. Um, there's a lot of things outside the don of, donut of Indianapolis, right? Um, I live in Terre Haute. There's a beautiful bike park that's just down the street from me called Griffin Bike Park. I've been up to Lafayette. I go to Brown County. I go everywhere across the state to visit these places because I think a lot of people don't realize what what trails and what types of riding there's out there. So again, there's a lot of information um, about particular rides that might be happening, as well as just information about how to support us and become a member. There's different uh, articles, like I said, talking about the importance of a bike fit, um, as well as if you know this face up here, Abby Wells, she works at uh, Bicycle Garage Indy and she talks about bike helmet and how it's important to have a good proper fitting updated helmet. As well as talking about our state house day, which I can go into a little bit later. Um, E-bikes was a big topic last year of, of what types of e-bikes, how do I take care of it, where can I get an e-bike, um, what types of e-bikes there are. Um, and a great shop in Plainfield, Gear Up Cycler, really helped me answer some of those questions. And as you see, we I talk about different trail work that happens across the state. And I will go over actually our new one uh, for 2024, our big bike guide. Um, and I'll have a little preview for that because it's not official yet. So again, this is the big section that I really wanted to highlight. Um, I have, from my previous job working with NICA with the kids to now, I've met some of the most incredible humans um, in the state of Indiana doing great things. Um, whether it's putting on races, getting kids on bikes, um, or developing programs within their school systems, or even just in their local towns. I think it's really important for the state to, one, know what's going on, but also see what what's happening and maybe try it in their area, right? So again, you can scroll through this and quickly look, but um, there's a lot of great information and articles that I put together to highlight these really important people. Um, like I said earlier, I have traveled all over the state meeting new groups, new people, new roads, um, new clubs, everything like that. And I think it's really important for people to see what's going on. Um, this is a group up in the greater Lafayette area that really focuses on getting every type of rider on a bike. Um, and they have a, cl a club and it's the Wabash River uh, Cycle Club. And they have a women's specific group and they have group rides that happen every week. Um, there was something really important too that I had learned through working with kids on bikes and working with a lot of mountain bike trails is there is a big push for adaptive mountain biking, which I think is really a neat thing. Um, Griffin Bike Park down by me in Terre Haute has a specific trail designed for mountain bike uh, wheelchair access, which I think is a great, um, you know, point for the park, but also to be inclusive. Um, and it's a really neat opportunity for other things to talk about like safety if the trail is wide enough to allow a wheel um, wheelchair mountain bike in it can allow any ems vehicle if there's an emergency as well as trail maintenance and um, making the park available to maintain it and keep it safe for riders and i'm happy to answer any questions later if you have specific questions about different topics that i'm talking about Commuting as a family is something that's really important. I met this really great guy in Bloomington that designs maps that show the most efficient and effective route how to commute in the city of Bloomington. Uh, his name is Mark Stosberg. If you ever want to look at really nerdy data, um, he analyzes trails, roads, bike lanes, any type of route uh, that could make it efficient for you to commute and not necessarily use a car. And he, he, I don't think he has a car. I think they fully commute on their bikes. Again, as I scroll through, there's a lot of different articles. Um, a great friend here um, really benefited from cycling with Parkinson's disease. She talks about how it's important to one, talk to your physician, but also how it really impacted her life. Um, again, more adaptive mountain biking. Um, Stone Eater Bike Park is another example. I know Paul Dangler on this call knows about this park, uh, but Lebanon is having a really great 
addition to their area um, with a great park that's going to be for not just mountain biking. It can be for other events like cross country running, um, but it's going to be in Lebanon, Indiana, which is really cool. At the end of every bike resource guide, we call it the BERG, which is Bicycle Indiana Resource Guide, there is um, a list of bike shops. I have to actually go through our current list because I know there's new bike shops and there's bike shops that have closed, unfortunately. Um, but what's great is everything is digital and you can click on it and you can email the person or you can call the person. Um, and it's great to see all the different bike shops across the state. So directory at the back, really cool stuff. Yeah, so let me stop sharing right now and I'm gonna give you a slight preview of the new one. Okay, I have too many tabs open. Share screen. What's great about this is our goal or my goal is to print this and deliver it to bike shops. So that way you can go into your bike shop and pick up the guide printed and take it home, have the articles, share it with your friend, um, and have, a, you know, something in your hands. It used to be printed years ago, but I think because of funding and how much it does cost to print things, um, and things just going digital, um, they have not printed it. So my goal this year is to print it and have it in shops because back in 2017, when I moved here to Terre Haute, I found one of those bike guides and that's how I found out about Bicycle Indiana. I was sitting in my shop and they were laid on the coffee table and I was like, oh, this is really cool. And then I thought, wow, there's all this stuff going on in the state. Like this is a really neat booklet. And I took it home. And so ever since then, I haven't seen it. And now that I'm here working with Bicycle Indiana, my goal is to print it. So if you look at the screen, hopefully you can see it. It should say working in the industry. You get it? Like in Indiana. Ha ha. So this year, I am focusing on all these really neat jobs that people have across the state of Indiana um, that work in the cycling industry. And I think it's really important because, one, we have a lot of history here in the state of Indiana for cycling. But also, I think it's just neat to talk about different jobs and, and professional careers in this. Um, if you are not familiar with the state of Indiana and a lot of the history, um, we have Zip here, which is a wheel, uh, carbon wheel manufacturing company in Indianapolis that is connected with SRAM. Um, we have Silka, which makes bike pumps and bike tools and, and some other different products um, with specifically, I think, wheels. Um, but they're also in Indianapolis. Um, the Indy 500 has a little bit of, of history with that, um, as well as there are different sales reps and different people that work in the business, whether it's going into bike shops or people like Tess and I who work in this type of industry. So I hope people get excited about this. Um, don't share yet because we're kind of in the, the editing um, process, but my goal is to get everything done and have it printed and then I'm gonna stop into bike shops and hand out what I can. Um, I will do a little quick plug. Printing is expensive. Since 2021, when they printed this last one, printing is just, well, everything is expensive, right? I mean, everyone can agree on that on this call, um, but printing is very expensive and we have funding to print off a specific amount right now, um, but it's not enough to do what we've done in the past. So if you know somebody or if you're willing to donate to just help cover the costs of printing, um, I'd be honored to talk. Um, I've gotten multiple quotes across the state of different uh, printing companies, um, but it is it is not a cheap thing anymore, especially if you want a high quality, decent booklet to print. Um, Again, I, if you have any questions, please let me know, but I'll stop sharing and I'll stop talking. Um, and if Tess, if I missed anything, if you wanted me to talk about, I can jump in. No, that's awesome, hey, Margaret. That's hey. incredible. Um, what, with so much information. And and I, the first question I had thinking is, so you, you're in the midst of um, final edits and printing. So what do you have a projected timeline of when these would be available? My goal is to have it all completely done by April 1st, printed, oh, okay. and then May, when I go up to the Fat and Skinny Tire Festival, if anyone mm -hmm. wants to come up to a fun event up in Warsaw, Indiana, and it's like a full weekend of bikes, um, I will be up there handing them out. Wonderful. 
And as you said, printing is expensive. Are these going to be available for free? Or are you going to request a donation or are you having people pay for them? Sure. Um, right now, if it is a bike shop that I have a, a relationship that I've established and they are supporting us, I will go in and give them some. Um, mm -hmm. But we will most likely ask if somebody wants a couple of them to pay a little bit of money just to cover the the, the basic cost because it costs so much. And the digital is also, will that be available online? Yeah. Cause that's, that's incredible. I love yeah. it. You click on things. It's all hyperlinked and stuff, but yeah, that's a great information. Thank you so much, Margaret. Yeah. I just plopped the uh, link oh. in, in the chat. If people want to oh. click on the, the 2023, cause I'm not sharing the two. Take, take a look at that one. Okay. Yeah. Great. Wow. It's pouring here. I don't know if anyone can hear that through my, uh, my audio, but it's thundering and lightning. So I don't know where you guys all are, but it's definitely a big storm out there. So um, so that was one of our favorite things, obviously, is the Bicycle Indiana Resource Guide. And so thanks again to Margaret. And so this is really more of a different format than um, what we've had in the past. It's really an open forum. So we'd love to have people share um, what kind of things they have, um, it, whether it be gear, rides, trails, coffee shops, breweries, the things that they like to ride in, in regards to cycling. So um, if you would like to, and I would love it if people would speak up, just make sure you keep yourself on mute until you want to say something, but unmute yourself at any time to to speak up and, and talk about what kind of things um, are your favorites. Um, Anybody want to start? No? Yeah, I'll start. This is Roy Sparks. Great. Thanks, Roy. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the uh, Fall Creek Flyers bike train. And um, I would say as far as like places we like to stop when we ride in for like a coffee stop, we, um, you know, the provider um, at 16th Street is a popular stop for us. And um, if you haven't been there, they've got a nice outside space to kind of lean your bike up against outside. So you don't have to worry about somebody absconding off with your bicycle while you're drinking coffee. Um, then the other place we like to stop is Leviathan Bakehouse. Um, that's down off of <clears throat> what would be affectionately referred to as the Monon Bypass on college. Um, that's how we got connected there because they put the bypass in and we're ride by there and we're like hey that smells great and we went down there and it's like oh they got a bakery so we stopped there um often too so those are probably our two favorite coffee stops in uh downtown you're muted. Sorry, thank you. I was muting because it's thundering and raining here. I didn't want anyone to hear that. Um, thanks, Roy. Those were great um, suggestions and, and favorites. I was trying to think of some other coffee shops that we really like. You know, we did just did an active transportation meetup over at the Avenue in Broad Ripple, and that was really easy to get to because um, the Monon's right there, and they just connected um, the Broad Ripple Park to the Monon. Um, does anyone else have any coffee shops that they really like, they like to ride to? Oh, Margaret, you're muted. <laughs> I clicked the button and I started talking. In Amazing. our new 2024, we did a Facebook post of of uh, what bike shops people like to, to ride to. And so that's going to be in our 2024. And did you see like, bike shops? I'm sorry, coffee shops. Coffee sorry, shop. coffee yeah. shops. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, bike shops aren't a bad thing to talk about either. Do, do people have favorite bike shops that they use? Um, I'm just going to mention not a favorite bike shop, but I love to ride up to the north end of the Monon up in Sheldon. And there is right about a block away, a, a great little restaurant called Twin Kiss. And you can sit outside and they have ice cream and all sorts of hot dogs and hamburgers and, and all quick food. And, uh, I go up every year in September on my birthday, and it's usually the last weekend they're open. Uh, it's just really a lot of fun. 
So where is that? Did you say Sheldon or is it Sheridan? Sher is it sh the very north? Is that Sheridan? Yeah, the Sheridan. North end. Sorry, thank you. The north oh, end great. of um, the north end of the Mona. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. It's we're sort of finally getting to warmer weather, which makes me so excited to be able to go to these different places and sit out and have a drink, some food after riding our bike. It's one of my favorite things to do. Does anybody else have any favorite breweries or restaurants that they like to ride to? And please, I would say as far as breweries go, um, you know, it's out of, they have pretty good beer and it's fairly close to the Monon is a center point brewery, um, just off 10th street there in the Indy circle industrial complex or whatever that's called. It it's not too far from the Monon. So it's pretty convenient. They have pretty good beer. Yes. And, and actually there's a plug for a bike, <laughs> bike Indianapolis is we're having our annual meeting there on uh, next Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, uh, March 19th at six. So um, feel free to come join us and check it out. <laughs> and they have a nice big parking lot and uh, places for bike parking, obviously. Um, so it's an easy place to get to. Thanks, Roy. Another one is the Gugman House. I don't know if anyone's been to that. Um, that's on the west side, um, off kind of between 16th and... Um, yeah, that's on that new extension right on Paul Creek that they took down. You can go all the way down. Well, yeah, exactly I rode by that. Side, so I can go all the way down Fall Creek and, and pop off to get to Googman. It's very quick and easy. And they have a nice outdoor space, lots of bike parking, and a very it's a very large um, brewery, so they have lots of seating. So that's a good one to go to. What's the one on the Monon that has the fire with the um, the flames and the, the black rock? And you can sit outside. I, I'm horrible. I don't know Indy well. I'm sorry, everyone. But I, I've gone there a couple of times. I biked there and had a, a delicious meal. I think it's, it's on the Monon. It's got to be up by Broderip on the Yeah. We're talking about some up there. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about Half Liter maybe? I don't know. I don't. I didn't know that Half Liter had that. So. No, that doesn't sound like Half Liter. Yeah, I don't but know. But like, Half Liter is a good stop. There's like, yeah. um, you know, like the, not campfire flames, but there's like, I don't know. I just remember it, it's right next to caramel? Broad Ripple ice cream. Well, public public greens. Uh, I don't know. It was good. Is it a restaurant? It it... Yeah, it was a restaurant. It was it's... cute. It was fun. Public and... greens. Public greens, I bet, because they do have those flame like yeah. the things, and then they have a like a garden on the other side of the yeah. bone. Yeah, yeah, that's a good Thank one. Yeah, there's a lot right there because there's bricks and public greens, and then you've got the brew pub. So that right downtown Broad Ripple. Lots of fun places to go. That's a good destination ride. Another um, spot accessible from Fall Creek Trails, if you ride Fall Creek Trail through uh, Fort Bend and uh, come out on the on the backside, you have Triton Brewery, mm -hmm. which is kind of up. Um, I can't remember which road it's on, but it's it's just outside of the fort. Yeah, that's a good one. I think it's Wheeler Road or something. Maybe. Very well could be. I just know it by sight. <laughs> the fort is, they're doing a lot at the fort. So you're right. That's a great connection for, cause you can go no, Northeast on fall Creek to get into the park and go through the park. And then you're you have access to the fort and there's lots of new restaurants, Giacomo's pizza, there's cafe yeah. Audrey's. Um, That's yeah, delicious. The library. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll put a plug in too, for those uh, on the Monon during downtown. Um, so the Fall Creek Flyer Group, we like to stop and drink coffee. And the other thing we've started doing is drinking whiskey. And so <laughs> West Fork Distillery is like a block and a half off the Monon West. Was that 17th Street? In Belfontaine. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. So we do that probably once a month. We'll we'll stop okay. there and get a get some kind of old fashioned or something. So that's yeah, a nice. Out, they have outdoor seating in the summer, so it's nice. That's really nice. And they have peanut butter whiskey. If you don't like whiskey. Yeah, like that is odd, isn't it? <laughs> peanut butter whiskey. But <laughs> they got a lot of different kinds of drinks there. So it's it's a it's a nice little stop, change of pace. Yeah. I'm trying to think about other restaurants, maybe on the trying to think about the cultural trail, if anyone has some suggestions for that, some other trails that we have, maybe more on the south side. And one that might be uh, more popular. 
once the nickel plate gets done in town is right just uh, east of the nickel plate trail where the nickel plate trail will be is the beer brewery on 65th street now they don't they don't have food but they have a really nice selection of a good beer they do and you know what's right next to them is movable feast which is also really good Yes, exactly. Movable Feast is great. You can grab something there and then walk over to beer and get a beer. And, and they they like people bringing food in. So, and yes, and so it's exciting with what they're doing at Nickel Plate. That I think they'll really help a lot of those businesses along that route. That's a good suggestion. By the way, I saw that they're putting aggregate down mm -hmm. at the Nickel Plate up like Fifty Second Street area. Yeah. It's getting so done. I was shocked to see, see that. Seems seem to be making great progress. Yeah, they are. It's exciting. Does anybody have a favorite trail? Like one that they, or even just one that they know they ride a lot. This is easy. It is convenient to where they they live. My favorite is probably from Fort Bend downtown on the, on Fall Creek. That's me too. <laughs> I know the Fall what? Creek Flyers, right, Roy? The, you guys use that one. Yeah, Andy and I, yeah. The yeah. great thing about that is there's not a lot of cross streets because it's along the creek. So that's, uh, you get unimpeded flow so for, great. you know, eight miles or so mm -hmm. before you have to stop like at 38th street. Yeah. One, one that I just found out about recently was, uh, up in Zionsville near 106th and Michigan. And that... then it heads up North towards white town. I think it's completed. Last time I was there, it was there were a lot of there were some uh, incomplete areas, but that didn't cross much traffic, and you don't have all the people to deal with on the Monon. So I I really liked that last fall. Is that four rails? Is that what that's called? Is that, is Maybe that... I think that might be what it's called. Um, and there, I... there's a there's a trailhead right by a uh, right by a neighborhood. It's around 106th, maybe 116th in uh, Michigan. Is that the trail that goes like through Lebanon up to Colfax? Like I, to Colfax? Maybe. That... I was honestly, I was limited on time. So I only was okay. going about a half an hour, 45 minutes north and back. But it was really a nice trail. Not many people on it. I know. Yeah, I'm looking for a good route to get from, uh, you know, Indianapolis up to Lafayette. And I was mm -hmm. looking at that trail the other day. See if I can find it. And it like, yeah, it went it showed it going from Lebanon to like Thorntown to Colfax. You know, it's probably, I don't know, probably sixteen miles long or something like that. Hmm. I think it said I think it is that big trail four rail trail. That yeah. is what it is. Okay. Four rail trail. Okay. I couldn't remember. It was something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's relatively new and they keep expanding that. So I know last year they finished the main part of it. So that's, I haven't been over there. I'm glad yeah, don't tell people because I like the fact <laughs> there aren't many, you don't have a lot of people walking on it like the Bonan. I'm trying, as a matter of fact, I'm trying to figure out um, where you could park and leave your car for a few days, you know, two or three days and that, you know, to access that trail. That's one of there, the things I'm there trying is to a trailhead out. off Michigan Road. I don't know if they allow overnight parking. Um, I mean, otherwise, I know up in Whitestown, there's um, a lot of public parking. Um, or, I mean, maybe even some of the businesses that are a little south on, on Michigan Road. Um, I don't know how, if there's any, how easy it is to get to. Um, as far as other roads though around there. Yeah. I need to come visit more. <laughs> Decision. <Yep>. <laughs> Any other trails, favorites or high usage? We can change gears for a minute. We could talk about, you know, now that it's, the weather's finally turning, we can does anybody have any favorite events or rides that they do, especially ones they do every year um, that they'd like to talk about or highlight? I would say my hometown ride um, that has been going mm -hmm. on for the last probably three, four years. It's the uh, down in Rushville. They do that uh, five covered bridges ride oh. in uh, mid-September. 
Um, so we have five covered. That's Rush County. They have, so it's about a 50, 50 miles southeast of Indy. And um, they've got five covered bridges in the county. And so um, they have a 50 mile route, the 30 mile route, and the 20 mile route uh, starts out of Rushville. So that's my old stomping grounds. And I got to spend a lot of time in those covered bridges as a kid. So I like going down there and riding that. I've never done it, but I've heard it's beautiful. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It is. I get Andy's ridden down there with me and he gets to hear all the shenanigans that I pulled off in the bridges when I was we, a kid. So we we've got plenty to blackmail Roy with now. <laughs> <laughs> Any other favorites? Has anyone done rain? Yes, I've I've done rain. Um but <laughs> that one's quite quite long for me. But one I enjoy is Nancy's ride because uh, Freewheeling Community Bikes, I think, is a wonderful organization. And their annual ride, Nancy's ride, is just a great fundraiser for them. And they're just a just a really, I think, a super organization. And that's a fun ride to support. And that's usually um, Labor Day, right around Labor Day every year. Remember as well. Yep. Yeah. I agree, Doug. They're a great organization. So it's good to support them. I would say the other ride that um, is probably worth doing if you haven't had a chance to do it, <clears throat> mentioning the uh, WRCC up in Laf West Lafayette, um, they own it, do an annual ride called the Wabash River Ride that's in, I believe, mid-August. Um, and it's great. It's along the Wabash River and a couple other creeks, and they've got several route options. They've got like 100-mile, 60-mile, 50-mile 30 mile bike routes on paved roads. They also do, they also have gravel road options. I think they got a, a 30 and a 40 and a 60 mile gravel road option that's tied to that ride. So it's pretty diverse and you get to see some really good uh, scenery of Tippecanoe County and Warren County and Fountain County. So it's worth going to. I, and by the way, I'm ex, I'm an ex president of WRCC. So I'm, it's, it's a great place to ride. I've ridden a lot of miles up there. And did you say this one is that? Yeah, it's the it's called the Wabash River Ride. It's hosted by the Wabash River Cycle Club. The when, when do they have it? It's in August. I want August. to say like the second or third Saturday in August. Okay. August twenty fourth. Yeah. So that's it's a in the, it's um, they've got sa multiple sags. They also have mobile sags and and um, I think there is some kind of food meal after that's included in your registration. I think they have like barbecue or something like that that's included. It, it, it's out of Fort Wiatton on along, uh, along the Wabash River there, just out, outside of town in Lafayette is where it starts. So it's, it's a really good ride. I'd if you want to drive the hour and 15 minutes up there, it's worth it. Yeah, Margaret dropped the um, link. Thank you, Margaret, into the chat. Did you do that, Margaret? I did. Yeah. yeah thank I you. second that, Roy. Uh, that area and that that ride is is a really great event. Um, I would say yeah. that. And oh, go ahead. Oh, I would say you mentioned too that, you know, I lived up. So I worked for Lily, and they had a facility up there, and I lived up there for uh, eight years, and that's where I started my cycling oh, career nice. and got very involved with that. That is probably the most active bike club in the yes. state of Indiana. And they have a ride calendar to beat nobody. It was really hard for me to come to Indianapolis because SEBA doesn't ride right, organize rides like this. And up there, they do it by ride category and have ride leaders. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really well done. And if you ever want to go up and ride some really cool territory, um, you know, contact them and go up there and you, you can find a ride for you and have a great weekend doing just club rides. I agree. I would say another one would be the Hilly 100. Did we already mention that? No, I was thinking that too, though, Margaret. If you get a chance to go to the Hilly 100, it is just a fun weekend of biking. You can take it serious. You can take it touring, casual, but there's fried chicken, pick, tubs of pickles and pickle juice. There's live music at every SAG stop. Um, but there is a lot of people, and people come from all places uh, to come to this event. Um, and the Hilly 100 is in Ellettsville. Um, and it's a two-day event, uh, around 50 miles the first day Saturday and then 50 miles on the second day. Um, and it's known for its very scenic 
twisty, turny, up and down um, hills. There's um, some classic hills out there, like Mount Tabor is one of the most difficult hills. I don't know if it's in the state or if just in this ride, but it's like 22%. Um, but it's it's a fun event where you get all types of riders um, out on bikes, um, eating, celebrating, riding. And usually the leaves are um, changing and it's very pretty um, and scenic and, and nice. So that's usually, act oh, it's going to be this year, October 4th to the 6th. And I, I think you can, if you don't feel up to doing both days, I think you can, you can do one day, right? I, right. I, I did that quite a bit. Of, and I'm not a huge, strong cyclist, you know, I'm more of a casual cycler and a cyclist. And I was able to do, I did one day and it, it was mm -hmm. really, really fun. And then they have a shorter version too. I think the mini, the mini hilly. Oh, now, they do. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. That's nice to have that option. Yeah. So people camp and they make it a whole weekend and I camped last year for the first time and it was really fun. Yeah. That's a good one. You know, another ride too that um, isn't quite as arduous as the Hilly 100, but you have variable mileage options is the uh, Hope Ride um, near Hope, Indiana. And there's a, was it 425 North or there's a, there's a brewery out that way too. So you get a, you have uh, choices on different mileages and then um, there's a brewery not too far from there that you can kind of stop by after the ride and hang out and have some food and beverage. Is that, do you know when that is, Andy? It's summer. I, you know, I don't remember if that was a July or August thing. It's been a while since I've ridden it. Our time. Yeah, I, I, I think they canceled that. I think it's done with. I tried to, uh, I, I rode that in the past uh, several times. And uh, I moved out of state and I moved back in state last year and I looked for it. It was, uh, yeah, they, they, they uh, disbanded it. And it's a shame because oh. that was a really good ride. Well, that's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, they said it was just from, from one year to the next. Uh, they just stopped doing it. And it was a very well organized. They had a, no. No, it, it, was, it was a great ride. Yeah, I agree. It was fun. Yeah, um, I'm state, anyway. <laughs> hey, oh, speaking of that, a note on rain I had heard this morning, and I haven't seen the post yet, but apparently they're having a challenge getting people signing up for rain this year. They're basically saying, you know, hey, if we don't get good attendance, we're not doing this moving forward. So <laughs> if you, if you want to ride rain, that's your passion. You, you might want to sign up. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. And I know it made me think when um, we were talking about rides, especially some of them that are out of town, because I know, I don't know, a lot of us are probably in Indianapolis, but there are some, a lot of great trails outside of Indianapolis and Margaret, you probably could speak to that. But um, during COVID, I kind of took a challenge upon myself to go try some of these different trails that I hadn't been to, like the Cardinal Trail and the Pumpkin Vine. And has it, have any of you tried any of these trails that are outside of Indianapolis? And is there a favorite that you have that you might want to mention? I've done the Cardinal and, and and have enjoyed it. I mean, you can do what you want. You know, if you just, um, you can kind of go down as far as you want to go and turn around, you know, whether you want to start up towards Muncie or towards Richmond. Um, but if you, you want over, I think if you do it all the way down and all the way back, it's about 106 miles. So that's a nice ride. And the pumpkin vine, I highly recommend. That's from Goshen all the way to, is it Mishawaka? I don't know, Margaret, you might know that, but it's a fun one because it, it, it literally is twisty and turny. You know, a lot of the trails that bike trails are, you know, rails to trail. So they're very straight, which is fine. But sometimes I get a little bored. I need a little more um, scenery and the pumpkin vine is really beautiful because it, it twists and turns and it's, a, and it goes through different towns and, and lots of farmland. And so I, I would recommend that if you haven't tried it. There's also, well, there's the Penzi, which is close to us. Um, the Panhandle, has anyone ever done the Panhandle? Mm -mm. That's kind of northwest of us, right? That would get you to Lafayette, Roy. Have you tried the Panhandle? Mm, I'm not familiar with that trail, to be honest with you. Where's that it out of? That, I'm trying to think. Um, it's north of us, so it's northwest, but I have to look again. It's been a while since I've done it, but it goes toward Lafayette. So that might, if you're wanting to go up that way, 
might be something to look at. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, my desire is to do a bikepacking trip and leave basically Indianapolis at some point north of town and ride up and go to Provincetown State Park, mm -hmm. camp there, ride with the local club, then ride back. That'd be fun. That's kind of what I want to try to do this year. It's kind of my, uh, you know, ultimate foray into introductory bikepacking. Yeah. And actually, that's a good segue. We are, uh, our next um, bicycle lunch and learn is about bike camping. I wrote it down here somewhere. Um, so if you guys are interested in joining us next month, that's what we'll be talking about. So we have a couple of individuals that have been, have, have been leaders for those kinds of rides. So um, that's something to, um, to attend if that's what you're interested in learning about. Um, on the chat, someone did mention that they, um, they don't have a mic, so they weren't able to say anything, but they were interested in trails south of Indy. And that's always a, a I know that that's an issue that there aren't as many. Do, does anybody have any comments on trails that they do south of Indy that are available? I mean, I know there's the Penzi, but that's actually kind of that's more southeast and it goes through Greenfield. But, and I know that they're um, working on construction of some Southern trails, but um, I know that that is lacking and we've been trying to work on getting more infrastructure set up for uh, cycling trails on the South side. I know there, I have to look it up on mine. There's, there's, a, there's a couple, I'm not, I'm not on the South side, so I'm not as familiar with that. Does anybody else have any input? Let's see if I can. No. I think Lisa, I'll uh, I'll look up some some ideas and I can let you know if you want to email me. I'll put my email here. Something that happened last month while you're doing that test. Um, I met with a couple of individuals from IU Bloomington um, with their students and we posted in our newsletter as well as on Facebook but um, the students are working on a hypothetical project of the South Monon going to Bloomington and then Bloomington to Indy and how a trail could be built what goes into it um, whether it's the infrastructure the funding um, how to get community support and working with the land um, and we met with some board members as well as the DNR people that work with the Next Level Trails grants. Um, and they just kind of had an open discussion. And these IU students will be presenting their projects um, in, on April 17th to their quote unquote client that works for the city. And hopefully it'll bring great information and feedback that maybe the city could implement um, or just use for future references if a trail were to be built in those areas. That's great, Margaret. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Well, I've thrown out a couple of different topics. Does anybody else have other topics they'd like to discuss or hear from others about their favorites? I mean, we could definitely do gear. I mean, there's a lot of, <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of favorites with gear. Does anybody have any favorite pieces of equipment? I don't know if I want to even go down the path of bikes. <laughs> Um, hmm. do you have something Andy no I'm thinking yeah thinking I would say bike lights running daytime lights when you're riding um, I know there's a lot of options out there that are relatively cheaper now I know bike companies have been trying to bring down the price point um, for lights as well as the efficiency and not needing batteries you can just plug in a usb and, and recharge it um i highly recommend it i mean living here in Terre Haute, we don't have a lot of trails i ride on the road a lot but whether it's completely bright and sunny out still having a flashing light um, is something that i really hope will help visibility as well as dressing like a human highlighter is what i always say um, and then I actually added this year and it's a, it's a little bit more money, but I highly recommend it if you're out on the road is one of those radar lights. Um, and it just, it, it purposely blinks more and erratically when a car is sensed by this radar that's in the light, but it also notifies you when a car is approaching, how far it is, and, and you can watch it on your screen. Um, 
coming and approaching you and passing you. Um, and what I like about that is if it's really windy out and you just can't hear, you can still see on your computer, oh, there's a car, there's three cars, there's four cars, and it recognizes things. And there's different brands out there, like Garmin has one that's really great. Um, but what I like is when it does recognize a car, it'll blink different to to keep you visible and hopefully catch their eye and let them know that you are there. That's really cool. I didn't know there was something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more money. I found one that's kind of like an off brand for about a hundred bucks. Um, but again, I ride a lot, not on trails. Um, and a lot of the times the wind is so loud that I can't physically, you know, or not physically, but I just can't hear them. And the, the car will suddenly go by me, but having that and just beeping at me and saying, Hey, there's three cars back, you know, it helps. It definitely does. And I would agree. I would echo the making yourself as visible as possible with lights, um, reflective gear, hats on bike. You know, I, my husband got me a stocking stuffer and it was reflective stickers and I just pasted them all over all of our bikes. This is as much as we can be seen, the better. So that's a good one. And actually that made me think of apps and just in general, does anybody have favorite apps they use for mapping or, um, you know, recording your rides? I use Strava. I've always used it. I, I was a runner. I am a runner. So I, I use it for that. And it's just easy because it includes all kinds of different activities. Um, it doesn't help me map, but it records my rides, which I like to have. Yeah, I guess as far as apps go, I really like Ride with GPS, the flexibility of being able to create my own routes as well as find other routes. It's just so flexible and it's great for tracking. It's great for everything. And I do echo your sentiments about lights. I My passion, I like to travel by bike more than anything. And I really believe I usually carry extra tail lights so in case one is not charged or it's been a very long day. And I run out of battery life. Um, I always have an extra, I never ride day or night without a flashing rear light. I agree. Well, one thing that I found out of other people listen to music, podcasts, et cetera, I've got some bone conducting headphones. Uh, some people hate them because they vibrate a little bit, but they keep your ears completely free. So you can actually hear traffic. I know a lot of people don't like to because they feel like they can, just so they can hear the traffic, but these with the bone conducting, you can keep the music down to a reasonable level. Even if it's loud, you still hear everything around you. I have those for running and I really like them. They're called Trex and they just, you're right, they sit right here. So yep. they're not in your, um, in your ears. So you can hear everything out. So I like that suggestion too. That's a very good suggestion. I, I, I agree. I like the bone conduction or I've had uh, like Zulu puck uh, speakers that are little pucks you can clip on your jersey or t-shirt or whatever you're wearing. And um, that way your ears are, you can maybe even hear a little bit better than the bone conduction, but uh, the audio is not as good, but, uh, but you can hear your surroundings very well. I listen to a lot of audio books when, if I'm out for very long rides and it's very helpful. I mean, I don't want anything in my ears when I'm writing. So those are very good. Yeah. How about bike locks? Anybody have any favorite bike locks? Keep, keep their bike safe. Hmm. No. I don't even know what I use. I don't even know what the brand is. So I can't old. remember the name of them. I know. I was like, I buying is super old. I've used Kryptonite in the, uh, yeah. a lot, but uh, you know that's mainly used if I'm going to leave my bike somewhere a long, you know, relatively long time out of sight. Because <laughs> they're heavy. Like a yeah. U-lock, or do you use like a, a cable? Um. For the kryptonite locks, I have, I think, three U locks. I also have, they make a, like a big log chain. Mm -hmm. um, I also have that. And again, I, these are used where I'm going to be at, leave my bike and not have it in sight because they are very heavy and yeah. um, that's not something you're going to carry a lot of these with you. 
Yeah, so the usually it's like it. if I'm traveling and I got to lock it out or something. Yeah. The forget about it's a little crazy. That that log chain you were talking about, that's it's heavy. You know, that's that's serious. Yeah, I usually <laughs> use these when like if I travel to like say a get a bed and breakfast or a verbo or something and they don't have a place for me to lock my bike up outside, I'll use these kind of devices when I'm on vacation. We used to forget about it on our tandem, but, you know, I kind of laugh because that's probably the lowest risk bike for us to get stolen. <laughs> it's very large. <laughs> you need two people to steal that bike. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And most people look at it and go a tandem and then walk away. Yeah, so. <laughs> so what you're saying, Andy, is I when I ride with you and you guys are riding in the tandem, I just need to lock my bike to the tandem. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now, I, I commute by bike and about 25 years ago I had a bicycle stolen with a cable lock and oh. um, so now I have a I have a U-lock that I just keep at work I leave it locked up at work and then when I get there I lock up to that spot unfortunately I don't have any competition at work for my bike spot <laughs> fortunately or unfortunately yeah, yeah. <laughs> speaking of I uh did get a new piece of technology last year. Um, you know, bikes getting stolen and whatnot. I know you could, uh, you know, hide air tags, you know, Apple air tags and whatnot on your bike. And, um, if you wanted to, um, mm -hmm. and I do do that. I put those underneath my rack rear rack on a couple of my commuters, but if you don't have a rack, there's a, a company called Nog K N O G that has a, basically it's a, it's a, Apple approved device. It's like an air tag that you uh, secure under your water bottle cage. Mm -hmm. And it has alarming features and, and whatnot that are tied to it. So I found that to be interesting and useful if you're worried about getting your uh, bike st stolen, like from a coffee shop or something. What, what's the name of that again? It's oh. called Nog K N O G. Okay. Yeah, I'll put a. I, I let me get a grab. A, here it is. There's a link. Okay. I'll put a link in. Another thing here, in at least at ISU here in Terre Haute, and I don't know if other big universities do this, but um, they have a specific thing for bikes. Uh, they for the kids where they register your bike and the serial number that's on the bottom of your frame. Um, and at least here in ISU, a lot of bikes get stolen, um, and kids don't necessarily lock them up you know, the right way. But when they register with the program that ISU provides with the police department, um, there's a higher chance of, of finding the bike or at least having a report or, or some type of follow-up. I do know that my local bike shop here will tell people, keep the receipt of the bike that you purchased as well as that serial number that's on the bottom, um, because that can also help you uh, do some stuff if you need to, if your bike does get stolen market doesn't marion county offer that already here i'm that? pretty i'm pretty sure i've done that okay do bike awesome. registration uh and actually if you get on bike indianapolis it, there's a toggle for i think it's uh, i forget under which one it is is mm. education it might be under ride and you scroll down there's a place that you can nice just or, nice yeah that's awesome so we're getting close to the end of time. And like I had said earlier, our next um, our next uh, Lunch and Learn is uh, in April and it's about bike camping. And just a quick last question, has anyone ever done bike camping or done a multi-day tour? Um, and if so, did they enjoy it? I'd be interested to hear what your, your experiences were before we wrap up. Yeah, I did the Dolmac. Um, that was, I wouldn't call that pure bike camping because it, it was one of those deals where, yeah, you slept in a tent every night, but they hauled your gear for you between yeah. locations. So that was from, uh, Lansing to Mackinac city. Ooh, that sounds pretty. Four day. Yeah. About 400 miles. That's cool. But I haven't done a true, like self-supported. Like self, yeah. Yeah. Which is what I'm kind of interested in trying. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I've done a variety of trips, um, different ways, both self-contained solo or self-contained with a group or van supported and different types of travel. I, I absolutely love it. It's by far my favorite way to travel in all the world. I bet. It sounds amazing. So if anyone has any questions about doing any type of travel like that or gear about gear or anything like that, now feel free to let me know. Great. Thanks, Doug. Well, we're about to one o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. I want to thank you all for joining us. Um, the Psycho Community Task Force, if you're not familiar with this, it's a combination or a collaborative effort between SEBA Bicycle Garage Indy, uh, Commuter Connect, and Bicycle Indianapolis. So um, we appreciate you joining us. Um, this will be, as I said, it was recorded. It is being recorded. So it will be available to be uh, streamed on YouTube, and we'll be sharing that link shortly. So um, have the, a good rest of your day, and thanks again. Thanks, Tess and Margaret. <laughs>